immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth we shall return. For so thou didst ordain when thou created me, saying, Dust thou art, and until dust thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. On behalf of the people of South Carolina, I also welcome you to this historic occasion and thank those who created it. The more I learn about our nation's history, the more proud I am of South Carolina's dramatic role in it. These ceremonies remind and instruct us of the virtually insurmountable challenges and burdens our people faced and overcame in securing their liberty and ours. Their goal was to create a new nation of freedom and liberty. Ours is to strengthen it, to preserve it, protect it, and defend it against all enemies, foreign and domestic. In comparison, our duties are lighter, but their value and importance to the world are undiminished beyond the imagination of these patriots. So let us take these moments to re rededicate ourselves securing the light of liberty in our land, understanding that if we fail, untold consequences will echo throughout the ages. God bless you. God bless South Carolina. God bless America. 243 years ago, men from two armies, one an established world power, the other a volunteer force for fledgling democracy met and did battle on these grounds. Nearly a thousand men were casualties in this place. Today, centuries later, we gather to recognize, memorialize, and reinter the earthly remains of 13 of the 14 found hastily buried in this dirt. The fact that 12 were continental soldiers and two fought for Great Britain is no longer of great significance. What is important, however, is the commitment to their service we demonstrate by conducting these honors today. Service to a cause greater than oneself is a hallmark of American military yeah. service. Whether that service was rendered the desert of the Middle East, the jungles of Vietnam, the plains of Europe, or the islands of South Pacific, those who fell here over two centuries ago were equally committed to causes greater than themselves. They would have no way of anticipating that the outcomes of their efforts would result in the rise of two of the greatest nations on Earth, once revolutionary enemies, now inseparable allies. Our gathering here today also reflects South Carolina's hey, continued hey, commitment to recognizing and championing the service of her veterans. Veterans of all of America's conflicts across all of America's three centuries of democracy. Today's assemblage also exemplifies the deep local commitment to a culture of service and recognition by community groups and leaders here in Camden and elsewhere across the state. The efforts of the South Carolina Battleground <laughs> Preservation Trust and the American Battlefield Trust continue to highlight the critical strategic role this state played in the American Revolution as they worked together to create the Liberty Trail, a physical and historical linkage of our state's dozens of Revolutionary War battles. Each of these locations saw American patriots and their equally committed British adversaries commit their very lives to their respective causes, and fought, and he died, to further their nation's objectives. So too do today's veterans, the current embodiment of patriot fervor, sacrifice much for our continued freedom. A nation and a people who commemorates its veterans from a two century past must most assuredly support its veterans of today, those whose service and sacrifice had such contemporary impact. That is certainly the pledge of the South Carolina Department of Veterans Affairs in the great state of South Carolina. We make that today and we will maintain it in the future. So thank you for gathering here today to honor these fallen warriors from so many years ago. And thank you for your continued commitment to supporting today's veterans across this great state and our nation. As you may know, the UK and South Carolina have a strong relationship that today is vibrant and looks to the future as partners. 
Thank you to all the armed forces personnel present today, gathered here at this centuries old battleground. We have representatives from the South Carolina Army National Guard, from the United States Army, and from the 2nd Battalion, the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Thank you all for your service to your country, and thank you for being part of history today. I would also like to thank the South Carolina Battleground Preservation Trust for inviting me to be part of this ceremony. It's an honor and it is a privilege to be here as His Majesty's representative in the southeastern United States. It's also personally important for me to be here. Throughout my career, I've served alongside the United Kingdom, the United States and other NATO forces. In Afghanistan, I saw firsthand their courage and dedication as they fought shoulder to shoulder in the response to 9-11. And in North Macedonia, it was an immense honour to see military and government partners work so closely to strengthen the NATO alliance with North Macedonia's accession as the 30th member state. During all of this, I have witnessed the danger our servicemen and women put themselves in to ensure the security of our countries. I know the sacrifices they've made to defend democracy and the rule of law around the world. The United States matters to the United Kingdom, and the United Mommy, Kingdom matters to the United the, States. Even though we are here at a place of conflict between us, nowhere is more powerful in illustrating the deep and enduring connection between our servicemen and women who train together, fight together, and die together. From conflict came unity. The wounds of the Battle of Camden of the Revolutionary War have long since healed, and our two nations are trusted friends and allies. These coffins hold the mortal remains of soldiers of the American Revolution. Throughout history, soldiers have endured and shared the hardships of service. Heat and cold, rain, fighting insects, boredom and terror, and, uh, actually... hunger and thirst. And in the extreme, like the deeds before you, blood, pain, Mommy, and death on good. the field of battle. Soldiers also have characteristics are an inherent part of those who serve in uniform. It is their collective and individual commitment and dedication, hope and faith, comradeship and loyalty, and also in the extreme, like for these before you, sacrifice for one's friends and country. These men and boys, but their boys only in age, were and are soldiers. And today we gather to acknowledge and honor their service and sacrifice with the dignity that was that fate denied them over 242 years ago. Fate brought these soldiers here all far from home. And fate determined that they remain here in this hallowed ground of this pine forest in shallow, unmarked graves to face eternity. Before us, the soldiers in these coffins are just some of the casualties from the Battle of Camden. Casualties are the tally of human cost battle. It is an accounting, a box for, for warfare. Though it gives us a means of assessment of the outcome of the battle, we lose sight of the humanity those numbers entail. Statistics are numbers without life or breath. These 13 soldiers are not statistics. They lie before us, not as an excerpt of history, but they are tangible and real. They represent the other 400 plus soldiers spread across this hallowed ground, hidden and unknown to us under a few inches of earth and unmarked graves. Such a number is hard for our human minds to imagine and process. But you can visualize those who remain here. 
Look at the vast expanse of tall pine trees to your front. Each one of those trees represents a soldier in an unmarked grave on this battlefield. They symbolize the scope of loss experienced on both sides. Those who remain are soldiers still, then and today. We acknowledge and honor them all for their sacrifice. Of the 13 soldiers before you, one fought for king and country. He was likely a non-commissioned officer of the 71st Regiment, Fraser's Highlanders, who Lauren Cornwallis committed late in the battle to seal the great British victory. The fate is a fickle thing. This soldier likely fell in the final organized resistance of the 1st Maryland Brigade. Bitter fate it was to fall so close to final victory. But on a battlefield where many unmarked graves were very shallow, this soldier's grave was different. It was deeper than the rest, and the Highlander was perfectly laid out in his grave. He was honored and dignified with a proper burial. One can envision soldiers of the 71st Regiment gathered around the grave in the early morning mist. The smell of gunpowder still pungent in the air, their heads bowed, giving final respects to a leader, a brother in arms and a friend. His pewter enlisted sword belt buckle and 71st buttons and the dignity of his burial speak to us today about the honor given to this unknown non-commissioned officer. For those interred in this hallowed ground, both of our nation and for those who fought for king and country, we wish them to know that time has healed these wounds from long ago. America is no longer divided between patriots and loyalists, but is one nation, and Great Britain is our staunch ally. Before you all saw are the, are the mortal remains of 12 Continental soldiers of the Maryland, Delaware, or North Carolina lines. They were identified by the pewter USA buttons found in their shallow graves and the locations in which they were found across the battlefield. For nine of them, their identification as Continental soldiers included the presence of fired British musket balls with their remains. Of the two soldiers found to the northwest portion of the battlefield, fate determined that they would fall so close to escaping the battle. They were in long graves. One was over 40 years old, likely a senior NCO or officer. Seems likely that this soldier did not even have the dignity of a shallow, unmarked grave. The other soldier, likely in his late 30s, was found along with a few rounds of his own 69 caliber ammunition and the tip of a Charville bayonet scabbard. Besides these artifacts, which defined the side for which he fought, was also the British musket ball that killed him. Fate decided that both of these men would remain on this field of battle. The unenviable task of burying the dead fell to the soldiers left on the field of battle. Their hands and bayonets were the basic tools to loosen the dirt and dig in the early morning heat. It is likely that those burying the dead included prisoners forced to bury their comrades, though the British likely buried their own, as evidenced by the care of the Highlanders' grave. The difficulty of digging, compounded by the numbers involved, led to many soldiers occupying a common grave. They gather in life, they gather in death. On the side of the battlefield where we are today, the Continental soldiers of the 2nd Maryland Brigade in the Delaware Regiment under Baron de Cab fought about 300 yards south of here. There, close to each other, are two yeah. shallow graves. One held the remains of two Continental soldiers, each over 20 years old. The other held the remains of three Continental soldiers. These boys fighting as men in the field of battle 
far from home and their mothers tied together. They made a sacrifice that would not earn liberty for themselves, but for others. Boys, young men, both. Friends in life that fate plays together in death in a shallow common grave that day over 242 years ago. On the east side of the battlefield, a grave held five more Continental soldiers. They were likely from the 1st Maryland Brigade, or perhaps a company of North Carolina Continentals fighting with Lieutenant Colonel Hal Dixon's unit. They desperately fought to keep the veteran British regulars from getting through them to strike Baron the Cavs' exposed flank. We can imagine these soldiers in combat, outnumbered, surrounded, fighting back to back until they fell in the smoky, early morning dark.